Hi, and welcome to the magazine. And my name is George Juguna. This is the first Friday of the month. This is what, July? Yes, it is July. And as we always do it here, we always have a guest in studio. And today is a very special one because it's a long conversation that we're going to have. With me in studio is Reverend Edmund Edmund Smith. Reverend, welcome. Hey, thank you so much, George. It's really good to be here. It's been a long conversation. This, we have had it for months before, but finally we are here. We get to sit and talk. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so maybe we can begin by introducing ourselves. Um, who is uh, Reverend Edmund? Okay, that's me. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier, it's been a while. We have been planning this interview, but it's happening now, I guess. I would like to say that God's timing is perfect timing. It's never mm. too late, never too early, always on time. Okay, let me yeah. just share a little bit about myself. Yeah. I am a pastor, a, f- a founder of ministry, of two ministries. I'm an author of two books, and I come from a country called Malaysia. Okay. Okay, I mm. Yeah. I, I know I know only I think one person so far. Now you're the second person that I get to meet. Uh, who is from uh, Malaysia. Tell me about your background. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, were you the firstborn? Tell me a bit about your family, yes. Well, I come from a state, we call it state, a city mm-hmm. called Malacca. Malacca is a popular state in Malaysia. Okay. Right? And um, yeah, it's like a lot of people when they're on holiday in Malaysia, they, they like coming to my state because it's a very touristy place. Mm-hmm. In my family, I have got three elder brothers, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm number four, and then one younger sister, five of us as siblings. Mm-hmm. So you're the third born? I was the, I'm the fourth. You're the fourth born, okay. Yes, okay. three and big how, brothers. Ah, okay. And how was it for you, you know, just uh, growing up? It was uh, not an easy childhood mm-hmm. because uh, my life began began with rejection, mm-hmm. um, meaning because my parents had already had three sons. And in fact, from the time they were preparing for the second baby, mm-hmm. because we got to remember this is in the 60s, so there's no scanning to check on the gender and all and that. of the baby, so from, yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. So from the time they, were, they conceived their second, for my, my first brother, my first brother, my first mm-hmm. sibling is a boy, so from the time they had a second child, they were hoping it's going to be a girl. And the third one, it was, uh, they were hoping again, but it was a girl. So by the time it was me, I was the fourth child. Mm-hmm. So they believe it's going to be a girl because mm-hmm. the pregnancy was different. My mom said that her experience was totally different. So they believed, believed and believed it was a girl. Mm-hmm. So for the nine months when I was in the womb, both my parents were speaking femininity into the womb and I would say that's like speaking rejection Mm -hmm. to the actual gender that I was that itself I believe did some started it was it started wrong yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how did it how did it affect you growing up um I believe that uh I was I'm totally different from my three brothers like Mm -hmm. you look at me and my brothers Mm-hmm. They are rough and tough. They are footballers. They are like typical guys growing mm-hmm. up. And I'm like, I was born very effeminate, very soft, mm-hmm. very gentle. I'm not rough at all. You know, I was totally different from the three of them. They clicked together. They played with each other. But I was always on my own because I was different. Mm-hmm. That was like the first three, four years of my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, did this affect you? growing up in terms of um, is it the reason why you became a transgender um that's not the reason Mm -hmm. uh but that got me started Mm -hmm. when i believe i was born with what is what it is known scientifically as a gender identity disorder Mm -hmm. or that's like an old terminology in in the acronym is gid Mm -hmm. and at the modern way of putting it would be gender dysphoria. Mm-hmm. Gender dysphoria is a disorder that, you know, it's a psychological thing that someone feels uncomfortable with their own gender. Mm-hmm. And that's not transgenderism, but that disorder can lead people into transgenderism. Mm-hmm. So I was about to say this, you know, when I was about four years old, I yeah. recognized that my father was very 
he gets very aesthetic and excited whenever my female cousins came over mm -hmm. to visit, to play with me. You know, he would express himself. He would be loving and, and playful, which I wish he did with me. Mm -hmm. Then it clicked in my mind that my father did that only with my female cousins. Mm -hmm. So already... Prior to that, I was already very feminine. But now, mm -hmm. it's like adding to it. I realized that if only I'm a girl, my father would treat me the way my father treated them. Mm -hmm. So I began to think like that and I began to believe that's the truth. Mm -hmm. That became my truth. And I approached my mother mm -hmm. and told my mother that I want to be a girl. And my mother allowed me to be a girl. <laughs> Meaning I, I, began, I began to dress up as a girl in the house. Mm -hmm. I began to only, and it was my choice. It was not my mother made me do it. My mm -hmm. mother allowed me to do it. So it went on until I was seven, about, about seven years old. Mm -hmm. Dressing like a girl every day, playing with toys. And I was so happy. So Edmund, is this something that, were you just dressing up in the house or you could go out? Also, did I dress like no, a No, I only, I was, uh, I was dressing up as a girl and it wasn't just, it wasn't just dressing up, you mm -hmm. know, I was living life as a girl and we call this, we call this the transsexual lifestyle when a person begins to live their life as the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. It's not playing dress up, it's mm -hmm. different. It's like you believe, a, a male believes that he is a girl. Mm -hmm. So I begin to, I was a typical girl. I started, I was doing sewing and cooking and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and everything that a girl would do. And I was so proud of myself and I, wa I wanted to prove to the world mm -hmm. that I was a real girl. I believe I was a girl. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, my father still did not care about me my father just continued to ignore me so I still didn't get that masculine attention that I was craving from my father yet wait, yet your mother was giving you that attention yes but then there is a you see love as gender this is something a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. masculine love there's masculine love and feminine love. Mm -hmm. No way my a mother can give her child masculine love. No matter how much you love a child, mm -hmm. a woman can only give out feminine love and just like a man can only mm -hmm. give out masculine love. Mm -hmm. And God created to create a child. And it's like the man and the woman's responsibility to pour love into a child. So mm -hmm. without one or the other, mm -hmm. there is an imbalance. So just mother's love in one's life is incomplete mm -hmm. so yeah so i had even though i had three brothers but they did not have time for me i didn't receive any love from them mm -hmm. no grandfather no uncle just nothing mm -hmm. so feminine love only it just gives you a an imbalanced emotions okay and now where where did you because when you when you miss it in your own family you definitely had to go somewhere and find it so where where did you, what was that community of people who made you now feel loved? Is it the transgender community or what? No, the thing is, uh, because I was uh, deprived of love, you mm -hmm. know, that's where things became, you see, I have to go back one step back before I share with you where I went to look for love. No problem. By the time I was about the time I was about seven years old and it was time to go to primary school. Mm -hmm. So my mom told me, you have to end, you have to end this lifestyle of living as a girl mm -hmm. because now I, you can't go to school as a girl because it's against the law. Mm -hmm. So my mom started talking to me nicely, but I refused to listen. And from mm -hmm. talking nicely, mm -hmm. because I was stubborn, I wanted to continue. Mm -hmm. She began to to verbally abuse me. I would mm -hmm. describe it that way. Mm -hmm. Then if I still did not listen, then eventually she began to physically abuse me. Mm -hmm. So my mom was the only person in the whole wide world who understood me, quote in quote, understood me that I was a girl. Mm -hmm. But now this one person, the only person in the world, mm -hmm. you know, she went to, in my mind as a child, mm -hmm. she transformed from a hero mm -hmm. to a monster. Okay. She became a monster to me and she was beating me up. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. So I began, you know, I already had issues towards daddy, towards, you know, not being loved by my father. And now I feel I'm being hated by my mother. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So all these are accumulating issues. So I didn't feel love at home. Mm-hmm. I felt rejected. So that's where I'm going to answer your next question. Mm-hmm. Where did I find? Where did I find love? Quote in quote love. Mm-hmm. So. In school, in primary school, I met a group of friends. Mm-hmm. So they were either transgenders as well, mm-hmm. or some of them. Are, there's eleven of us, a group of eleven of us in school. Mm-hmm. Okay, including including me. So ten other people. Mm-hmm. So they were either transgenders or they were feminine gays. Mm-hmm. Gays, gays. There are two types of gays. Gays. Mm-hmm. There's masculine and feminine. Mm-hmm. That means they are boys. Who also quite soft, but they are not the same as transgenders. Transgenders means we believe we are girls, even though we are males. But mm-hmm. gays, no, they believe they are male. They don't want to be a girl, but they are just gentle. Mm-hmm. So this group of us, eleven of us, so they became like my closest friends in school, and I called us the Angel Brigade. So that's the name of our group. Okay. So that's one of that, that's the place where I had. You know, some support. You know, it went on all the way to secondary school until I was seventeen. Mm-hmm. But that's not that's that's where I got support. But that's not the only place where I received love. What happened was by the time when I hit thirteen years of age, I mm-hmm. began having sex with men, mm-hmm. not with my angel brigade, but with other men. You know, mm-hmm. like um, quote in quote straight. Men. I mean, they are not super straight because a super straight man will not have sex with me mm-hmm. because I was very feminine. If you look at my pictures, I, I look very much female, you know, yeah. in, um, then when I was. So this was straight guys, not part of the Angel Brigade group. They were mm-hmm. other guys. Mm-hmm. So uh, they were just using me. I was looking for love. You know, mm-hmm. I wasn't looking for sex, mm-hmm. but they did not have love to offer. They only had sex to offer. Mm-hmm. So I got sexually involved with many, 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 many men. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this proudly. Mm-hmm. I always say this. The reason I say this is because to give hope to the people out there who's listening to the sound of my voice. Yeah. That does not matter how messy your life is in the past. You know, God can ch- turn you around mm-hmm. just like he has done for me. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'm 51 years old now. So this is many, many, many years ago. Yeah. So you know, I did not change last year. I changed twenty over years ago. Yeah. And what my point here is that you can sustain the change that Christ does for us in our lives. Yeah, it is possible in yeah. Christ. Yeah, good. Now tell me, uh, because now um, let us talk about the effects that it, how how people received you, or rather how people uh, understood you, because. Uh, here you are now, your family has rejected you. Uh, let's talk about your your friends, because I'm sure you had friends uh, who were, uh, allow me to call them straight. How, how, how did they receive you? How did the neighboring community, your town, uh, receive you? My real friends were the, the 10 other people, the Angel Brigade. But mm-hmm. since you are, you you raise up the word straight. My straight friends, I had a handful of female friends mm-hmm. who accepted me, but I think they accepted me more as a female mm-hmm. than a male. As okay. for straight male friends, mm-hmm. zero. I didn't have any because the only, the only ones, the only straight guys I knew were guys that wanted to have sex with me. Mm-hmm. But friendship, none. As for the general public, mm-hmm. I was bullied. I was made fun of. I was mm-hmm. laughed at. So, you know, may- maybe in this era, now we are, we are in 2021, it's different. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about then. This was in the 1970s, 1980s. Yeah. It's different. You know, people like us are totally rejected. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, was, I, I experienced a lot of bully and yeah, rejection. I was even raped. When I was 19, I was raped. A terrible experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reverend, thank you so much for keeping me company. So I don't know where we where we begin. Probably we can begin with how you started this journey of becoming a man again. Okay, let's go. Let's go back. Okay. To uh, a little bit on the before I became a man. Mm-hmm. There's something that happened to me in between my life as a transgender person. Okay, we okay. call it transgender woman. 
Okay. A male who believes that he is a woman is known as trans woman, transgender okay. woman. Okay. There is something in between being a transgender woman and between a, the real man that I am today. Yeah. But this is my not, this is my story. This is not a story of every transgender or every ex transgender. Okay, this is my story. Every one of us are unique. Mm -hmm. So so what happened was um, the place where I where I live is called Malaysia, as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. Yeah. For us to go to go for our surgery, the nearest place to be to get it done is in Thailand. Thailand okay. is situated north in where I come from, Malaysia, mm -hmm. and above us is Thailand. Okay. And this was this was in um, the 80s, late 80s. So the rule is to transition to become a for the, the surgery to take place and everything in Thailand. Mm -hmm. I have to be 20, 21 years old. Okay. So I have been waiting for that surgery since I was 13. Okay. I worked part time. I saved the, the, my money. I was planning for my surgery, mm -hmm. but something happened when I was eighteen. Mm -hmm. I believe it's God's intervention. Yeah, I you know I'm not I'm not saying God sent me a boyfriend, but God mm -hmm. used my first boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Bible, mm -hmm. God used a donkey. So if God can use a donkey, God can use anybody. Yeah. So I met my first boyfriend when I was eighteen. But let me say that before meeting my my boyfriend, mm -hmm. I was already sexually involved with other guys by the time I was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. But they were all straight guys because straight guys will go after trans women because I was very feminine. I was look, I look like a girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was not involved with gay guys. Gay guys do not want trans women. Gay guys want men. Okay. Okay. So so my boyfriend was not straight. My boyfriend was not gay. He was something in between. It is mm -hmm. known as bisexual. Okay. And that was a blessing in disguise. So because he was bisexual, mm -hmm. you know, he began to love all of me, meaning my femininity as well as my masculinity. Mm -hmm. He loved me, you know, because if I was with a straight guy, uh, the straight guy will reject my masculinity. Mm -hmm. If I was with a gay guy, the gay guy will reject my femininity. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. But a bisexual guy, on the, on the other hand, he liked and he celebrated both my femininity and masculinity. And I didn't understand. I was confused at first. Mm -hmm. You know, say, so how can a guy, I never met a bisexual, mm -hmm. but slowly, slowly but surely, I began to see that I didn't have to become a for me to experience the love that I've been looking for all my life from a man. Because even though he's bisexual, mm -hmm. but he's a typical man. My mm -hmm. first boyfriend was a typical guy. Mm -hmm. I was confused initially, as I mentioned earlier, but slowly I began to see the beauty of not uh, transitioning, which is supposed to happen, you know, in two years down the road. I was mm -hmm. 18 then, 21. So I spoke to my boyfriend about this. I'm going to have my sex, sex change and everything. He said, for what? I mm -hmm. love you for who you are. You mm -hmm. don't have to go. So I didn't. You know, that, that began a change in my mindset, in my thought life, in my heart. It took a few years, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21. So by the time I was 21, mm -hmm. I, I actually was supposed to go for my surgery to begin my transitioning. Yeah. But I actually changed into a regular guy, but not a straight guy. Mm -hmm. But I went from being a transgender woman into becoming a gay guy. Ah. Meaning, I don't want to be a woman anymore, but I still want to be with men. Okay. So, so yeah, as a transgender woman, I met my first boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But as a gay guy, I met my second boyfriend and then my third boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So, by the time I was with my third boyfriend, I was already about 23, 24 years old. Mm -hmm. So, meaning I wasn't that young. I'm ready to settle down. So, I thought I met my dream guy, my Mr. Reich, my Prince Charming. He's gay. I'm gay. Mm -hmm. No longer trans now, remember? I was typical a guy, but, you know, gay. Yeah. So we were planning to get married, live, to, live happily ever after and everything. Mm -hmm. But something happened. I caught him cheating on me with another man. Mm -hmm. so that, and that was the time I was not even born again. I was not, I have not given my life to Jesus Christ yet mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, But I was surrounded by Christians because I was working uh, in the school, because I was actually, before becoming a pastor, I was a teacher. 
Okay. I was I'm a I was a teacher who teach special children, children with Down syndrome, children with autism. So I, and in the school I was teaching in mm -hmm. was run by Christians. So there are many Christians there. Mm -hmm. So when I was cheated by my boyfriend, my third and last boyfriend, I told myself, I am done with all this. I'm I just can't take it anymore. It's okay if I don't experience love. I will just focus on my career as a teacher and just grow old, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was 1994 when mm -hmm. I just made that decision. I didn't just break up with my boyfriend, but I broke up with the whole lifestyle. It was not easy, but I, because thank God I love myself enough to mm -hmm. not continue that life. Yeah. But what happened was, The next year, that was 1995, mm -hmm. I gave my life to Christ. And it's related to me breaking up with that world. If I didn't break up with that lifestyle, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have given Jesus a chance. But you yeah. see, all this, I believe God is at work. God is working. God is working. Yeah. So by the time I was 25, when you know my first disciple um, reached out to me and I gave Jesus a chance, there was... Then until today, I've never turned back. You know, I have uh, fallen in love with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. first and foremost. And my wife, who, who actually happened to be my colleague, she was also a teacher in that school that mm -hmm. I was teaching in. Okay. She was a teacher. Uh, Reverend, let, you, you're going a yeah. bit fast because I want, to, I want our listeners to just understand this story uh, pretty, okay. pretty well. So allow me to take you back a bit. So in sure. nine, in 199 between 92 and 94 you mm -hmm. said you had three boyfriends what is it that you're looking uh in them or rather what made you break up with these three because there must have been something that you're looking for okay uh, you got the year wrong okay i met my first boyfriend in 1988 when i was 18 okay. as a transgender person okay right? 88 so okay I Yes, by the time yeah. I was 21 in 1991, mm -hmm. I was no longer a transgender, but I was a gay guy. So between 1991 and 1994, I had mm -hmm. my second and third boyfriends, okay. just two boyfriends. And okay. it's normal, it's just normal for a gay guy mm -hmm. to want a partner. Okay. Just like a man, a man wants a woman, but mm -hmm. a gay guy wants a partner, which is another man. So it's it's a normal thing. It is it would be strange for a gay guy to not want another guy as a partner. It's just that's how it is. Okay, you but know? but my question is, why did you change them? I know yes, for the first time you are transgender, but when you mm -hmm. turned to a gay, how many mm -hmm. partners did you have? Serious relationship, just two. But in between, of course, there's a lot of one-night stands okay. and everything. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. To be honest with you, to be honest with you, from the time I was 13 to 24, I had sex with hundreds of men. Mm -hmm. Okay. I only, I only fell in love three times. First time as a transgender, second and third time as a gay guy. But I was sexually involved with hundreds of guys. Okay. And that's like normal in that, in that world. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about your salvation. Um, how was that for you? You know, this was uh, amongst the people whom I was uh, was trying to reach out to me. There's one particular, particular lady. She's about 20 years my senior. Mm -hmm. She was also a, a, te a teacher in the school I was teaching in. Her name is Jenny. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Jenny just... Um, Long before I decided to give up that lifestyle, the, the gay lifestyle or the and the transgender, I knew Jenny already. But yet she never rejected me. She never treated me less. She never forced me to give give up that lifestyle. She just prayed for me. Mm -hmm. She prayed with me and she loved me genuinely. Mm -hmm. So when and You know, when I decided to live that lifestyle, she was the person that I went to because mm -hmm. she was always there for me. Mm -hmm. So when the rubber hit the road, we always go to the people whom we believe loves us. I saw her love long time before I changed. Mm -hmm. So when I, when, when that, because she impacted my life already. So when I went to her, I said, I told her my story, what happened. I broke up with my last boyfriend and I'm done with that lifestyle. And that's why she said, you know, You, you know, I know the man that you need. Mm -hmm. It's the same man that I have. His name is Jesus. Yeah. You, have given, you have given all these other men 
your life a chance to 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 be with you why don't you give this man mm-hmm. you know who truly loves you and his name is Jesus and i trusted her not because of those beautiful words because she has been there all the while because mm-hmm. she has been loving me and praying for me all the while and mm-hmm. that is why i could listen to her and actually embrace what she has to say and i immediately accepted i said i trust you jenny i see you as a different person because you know i can't say this about every christian i know but i can say this about jenny mm-hmm. she is a real little jesus that i i know in my life wow is is, is she still alive to date yeah yeah she is she became a pastor Uh-huh. She also became a pastor and then uh, she's retired now. She's uh-huh. in the 70s now, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. And um now let's talk about you. Now I I believe you you're you're just laying a background uh, as to how you changed back to a man. So you've reached where now you have been uh you you're now saved. Now t- t- talk to us more about that about uh my ministry are you asking no 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 Sorry. now change, changing 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 back to a man now stopping being gay let me let me put it that way okay we yeah. call we call it the journey of recovery the jor okay. okay. i use the word i use the word journey for a reason because it's not a one time decision it's a long journey mm-hmm. okay for me in total i think uh, i took about 10 years mm-hmm. in my journey mm-hmm. been working with people in the same journey that I I guide them not just me but my ministry guide them mm-hmm. some people take 3 years some people take 5 years some people take 10 years all, all depending on a lot of things yes yeah? so mm-hmm. this in this journey of recovery two things happens mm-hmm. two things happen in this journey of recovery first one is the the person who's in this journey we call them befriendies Mm-hmm. befriendies like befriender is the one who is journeying with them the mm-hmm. befriendies are the one who are the ones who are in the journey mm-hmm. so as a befriendy there are two things that needs to happen in their lives number one is they grow into a deep and deeper relationship with the lord jesus christ mm-hmm. and that's what happened to me from 1995 onwards mm-hmm. that is a must it's not enough to uh, and and jenny guided me in that journey it's not enough to to um believe in jesus go to church on sunday you will not change mm-hmm. or maybe you might change but it's temporary to yeah. have permanent change and i've been i i started my journey you know journey of recovery when i was 25 i mean super serious mm-hmm. and today i'm 51 and i would say i've never given up in growing in my intimacy with the lord meaning spending time with the word spending time in worship spending time you know just growing in that relationship that's the first thing that we do in the journey of recovery okay. and secondly secondly is to resolve the trigger issues and this is something i teach a lot about i've written, i wrote about it in my book i have videos on it okay the trigger there are three trigger issues and they are human issues even you could be having these issues these issues doesn't mean make you gay these issues are human issues but if not dealt with these issues can lead people into sexual problems and relational problems mm-hmm. you like to mention them sure Yeah. I pause a while. I pause because I was wondering if you are still there or not. I'm yes, I am. <laughs> I'm here with you. <laughs> so the three, the three issues I call put them together. I call them the trigger issues. Okay. Um, the first one is called the first one is the self issue. Okay. The self issue is basically a rejection of self. Mm-hmm. That means you don't embrace the person that God made you to be. You mm-hmm. may not you do not embrace maybe your gender or your looks or your skin color. Anything about you that you don't accept, you know God made you who you are and you reject it, that's the self issue. That mm-hmm. must be resolved. Mm-hmm. People must come to the place of embracing themselves to know that they are precious because God made them. So that's why they are precious and God does not make mistake. Yeah. That's the first thing. Okay, mm-hmm. resolving the self issue. Secondly, is resolving um issues towards people of the same gender. Okay, that means you could be having two types of issues towards people of the same gender. You could be either running away from them mm-hmm. or you could be running after them. Okay. Okay, running away from people, it's called the barrier issue because there's a barrier. Something happens and you run away from people. Mm-hmm. running that's running away that's the barrier issue yeah. another one 
after people is called the vacuum issue. The mm-hmm. vacuum issue is where there's an emptiness, so you run after people. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that means the first one is a self issue. I mentioned earlier, the second issue to resolve is issues towards people of the same gender. That means if you, if the befriendly is a male, they resolve the vacuum or barrier issues towards men. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Okay, and the third issue is resolving issues towards people of the opposite gender. So yeah. in a similar way, you issue, you resolve the vacuum issue or the barrier issue towards people of your opposite gender. Yeah. So I repeat, I repeat the trigger issues. The first one is self issue. The second one is the vacuum issue. The third one is the barrier issue. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Aha, uh-huh. continue. So it it's some anyone who comes to the ministry and say, I want to uh walk away from this lifestyle. I want to be, I don't want to be gay anymore, I don't want to be trans anymore. So they have to agree to enter into this journey of recovery. Mm-hmm. That is very important. And they so I say if someone comes and says, Oh, I, I want to be set free, but I don't want Jesus, I'm telling you it's impossible for okay. recovery to take place. Or mm-hmm. I want to, to be set free from lesbianism, but I don't want to resolve the three trigger issues. It's not going to work. You can't pray the gay away. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you know, there's a saying, praying, you just pray, pray, pray. No, you've got to go through resolving of these three trigger issues. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, uh, moving towards a deeper relationship with Christ. And anyone who's in this journey of recovery mm-hmm. actually need others to stand with them. And we call the others befrienders. So that's why I told you from the very beginning, I have two ministries, RLM, Real Love Ministry, yeah. Journeys with People, and SIMB are equal equipping people to become befrienders. So we match the befrienders and the befriendies. It's vital to have befrienders. And there is such a lack in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that brings to another topic where uh, we have a program called the Victory Meeting that goes on year after year. And it Mm -hmm. happens once a month. People all over the world are attending this program called the Victory Meeting to be educated. So we have befrienders attending the VMeet Victory meeting, we have mm-hmm. befriendies attending to be equipped because knowledge is power. It's not enough to say, I want to change, but you do not know how to change. It's never going to work. So the mm-hmm. VMeet is that people just come gather uh, through Zoom, you know, once a month and they will be educated on this topic. So anyone who's serious about changing or mm-hmm. anyone who's serious about helping others to change, it is compulsory to attend this educational program called yeah. the Victory Ring that is available. Okay, good. So this was what you went through. This was your journey. Yeah, exactly. So basically, you know, in uh, when when I was um, after I've got born again, I've came out of that lifestyle. I sat down with the Lord and I said, Lord, show me mm-hmm. what I've been through. And by that time, I didn't even know I'm going to start this ministry. Okay, that my ministry started in 1999. It's yeah. like many years ago. I took right. I didn't know God is going to, you know, I mean, today I've been, I've, I've spoken in South Africa, I've spoken in Europe, I've traveled, you know, many parts of the world, and I didn't know that's going to happen. I didn't know I'm going to get married. I didn't know I'm going to be a father and everything. I just wanted to tell, I wanted to, to ask God, tell me what happened to me. How did I change? And mm-hmm. God revealed things to me one by one. And the, and the reason God even had the conversation with me mm-hmm. is he was actually pre- preparing me for the ministry that was going to start mm-hmm. in 1999. So everything mm-hmm. that I share with you is my own journey. And what I'm doing now is I am helping people go through journey that I myself went through. So it's, what I teach is not something I learned from a book, but from the journey that I went through myself. Ah, good. And talking about journeys and what you went through, you you fell in love with someone, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and this is the first time you are falling in love with the with the woman. Is it true? Yes, first and the last, and the, the f- only woman I fell and, in love. And with. the only woman you fell in love. Yes. Tell us, how was it for you coming from being a transgender? How was it? And this is after how long? I became an ex-gay when I was 25 years old, mm-hmm. in 1995. Yeah. But remember, I met my wife when I was 21. She was 18 and I was 21. We met in the school that we were teaching in. Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah. And we click immediately. We were best friends. Mm-hmm. We were best. We were very close. But we were more like two girls, actually. Mm-hmm. That's how we were. 
it, when yeah. we first started our relationship. Mm-hmm. And slowly but surely, the relationship evolved and we both got born again the same year. Uh-huh. We got born again in 1995, where I was 25 and she was 23. Okay. In that same year, about 20. She was 22, I was 25. And the mm-hmm. next year, 26, the next year when I was 26, we got married. We got married the year after that. Ah. But we known each other for the longest time. This year, mm-hmm. 2021, we celebrate our 25th uh, wedding anniversary. Ah. It's been 25 years since we got married. Ah. Okay. And yeah. I don't know. Let's let's take a short break because we've uh we've talked quite a, a bit. Uh let's take a short break when we come to talk about marriage life. And uh probably before we go on this break, had you fully recovered when you were getting married? Okay, when I was we got married, we got mm-hmm. married when I was 26, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and we got married, to be honest, as a best, as a pair of best friends. We love each other, mm-hmm. we knew that we want to serve God together. Okay, yeah. uh, and uh, and everything we're like a pair made in heaven. Mm-hmm. But I would say, honestly speaking, we married when we got married that year. Mm-hmm. We were we got married as a pair of best friends. Okay. That's how we got married. Okay, yeah. okay. But Good. God was God 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 kept on working in our lives, you know, and uh, yeah, so it was amazing. It's, it's amazing to trust God with everything, including our marriage. Ah, okay. Quite an amazing story by Reverend Edmund, ex-transgender pastor. I had to get that correctly because <laughs> you, you know <laughs> this is this is a new field and this is an interesting conversation that you're having, but I have to get things right as they are. And thank you so much for keeping me, keeping us company. If you have any comments. Or questions, just get in touch with us on our WhatsApp number. That is plus two five four seven five three nine zero three three seven three. Plus two five four seven five three nine zero three three seven three. Wonderful level. It just makes my day a whole lot better. It just makes me feel good about myself if I'm having a bad day. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Blue Radio K E. Like us on our Facebook page. Blue Radio K E. And welcome back. Now, I have the Reverend Edmund Smith with me still on the line. And uh, I have somehow managed to get um, his wife, Amanda, to just get into, you know, the studio a bit and just talk about um, how he, has, uh, how she has loved this man. And uh, Amanda, how are you? I'm good, Josh. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me two minutes of your time. It's my pleasure. Good. So tell me, how did you first meet, uh, meet uh, Reverend? He said he shared his side of the story, but we always like to just hear the other side of the story. How did you meet uh, um, uh, Reverend Edmund? Okay. In 1991, that was my last year, last year of my high school. Mm-hmm. So while waiting for my result, then uh, my neighbor just introduced her workplace to me, say that there's a vacancy. Mm-hmm. while waiting for my results so okay why not so I just went applied went for interview in this uh, place uh, for special education mm-hmm. so I went for interview and I got it mm-hmm. so when I went in there mm-hmm. here is the man who's standing in front of me such a gorgeous guy mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so that's how I met him in this uh, special school ah good and when did you fall in love with him? <laughs> <laughs> I think I fall, I fell in love with him the, the first day I met him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And and how I did it how did he treat you? How did he reciprocate the love? Even though I fell in love with him, I think I didn't tell him, I didn't confess to him that I'm in love with him. Mm-hmm. So we just build our chemistry is so strong. We just build friendship. Mm-hmm. I believe he know from the start that actually, hey, this girl is into me. Mm-hmm. But then he didn't make it like obvious or what. But we just grow in friendship slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we became friend and good friend and best friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how. It's... Then uh, because he, is, he grows slowly, so mm-hmm. he able to accept my love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, good. And and you also played a big role in, in terms of him 
you know, just tra- uh, when when he was in the process of, you know, transitioning to become who God created him to be, and that is being mm-hmm. a man. Uh, tell us a bit about that journey. How was it for you uh, emotionally? Yeah, and, and just playing that role of a supportive uh, woman. Okay. Because I was in love with him, mm-hmm. of course, it's not easy seeing this guy that you're in love dating other people. Yeah. Or you who was in that journey, mm-hmm. was struggling and falling and waking up again. Yeah. But then I believe that because God gave me that love mm-hmm. and that strength in mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. just to stand by, even mm-hmm. though it was hard, Mm-hmm. It sometimes it was uh, hurting and all that, but it's God's strength, God's mm-hmm. love that in me that enabled me to just stand there and support there, and whenever he fall, just be there to by his side to encourage him to mm-hmm. move on with his journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say it's, the end of the day is all God's strength and God's love. Mm-hmm. Good, and uh, you eventually got married, and uh, you now have kids. Twenty five years later. Congratulations, first of all. Uh, 25 years is not an easy thing to be married to someone. How has the journey been ma- marrying this gorgeous man that you described? <laughs> I'm, sure he's, I'm sure he's blushing yeah. whatever next to you there. <laughs> I think he's, he's so used to hearing me say this. Really? Yeah, I'm sure as, as a man, I can tell you every time your wife tells you that, because I, I experienced that too, because I'm married. I know it's, it's, it's not the same. I am. I can guarantee you it's not the same. He might pretend outside, but deep inside him, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you are asking us how it has been. To how the journey has been. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, there's up, up and down. Mm-hmm. There's times that there's challenges that comes in, and uh, but because of our commitment to each other and the love that we have for each other, mm-hmm. that and above all, God in the midst of our marriage, mm-hmm. that I would say it has been a wonderful journey, mm-hmm. and of course it will continue until we um, go to heaven, meet in heaven. Yeah, so it has been like roller coaster. Mm-hmm. But then that's not a good thing. It's, it's, no, it's up and down. It's <laughs> <laughs> not no. a good thing. Okay, then I I take back that. <laughs> then I take back that it's not mm-hmm. a roller coaster. But then yeah. of course I won't I won't say it's a smooth journey. Yeah. Because every relationship has up and down, mm-hmm. but not as a roller coaster, I guess. Yeah. Then but but it has been a beautiful journey. Ah, Overall, it's been a beautiful ah. journey, ah, wonderful nice. journey. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. Uh, don't don't leave yet. I just want to uh, bring in Edmund for a bit. Edmund, now um, you have three children right now, if I'm not wrong. Two children. Two children. Are you prophesying? Yeah, uh, maybe. I may be. You might just get one on your thirty fifth <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> maybe an adopted one. Maybe not biological. <laughs> but uh, I, I have had a chance to, you know, watch you and your daughter on one of the videos that uh, you you sent me, and uh, you seem to be quite a beautiful, beautiful family. How did you, how have you managed to, you know, raise your children and knowing that they, some, they may get this backlash in terms of, you know, we know your father, we know what he used to do. And so, you know, and, and, and such kind of things. How, how did, have you managed to deal with this? I think honesty is truly the best policy. Mm-hmm. So, and we got to start as soon as the child is capable of comprehending. So I started very young. You know, of course, it building up, not just throwing at them the whole thing, you know, being creative, mm-hmm. being led by the spirit, using the wisdom of God to tell the children the truth instead of hiding. It's better for you as a parent to tell your child mm-hmm. instead of they hearing it from somebody else, because when they hear it from somebody else, it'll be a different version altogether. Yeah. So I started telling my children the truth. I even showed them pictures of, of me as a transgender when they were very young. I said, 
you know, and teaching them. In fact, in fact, that's not even a bad thing. That's a great thing to tell them. Hey, you know, no matter what mistakes we've done in my life, and your father himself done great mistakes, but look at me today, and they are super proud of who I am today. Mm-hmm. You know, they they. So I believe they are strong enough to face anything that comes their way. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms mm-hmm. of people saying anything about their father. So I think all glory to God. Because yeah. I started very young and mm-hmm. I build it up slowly but surely. In fact, I talk about my ex boyfriends like nobody business. Like this was my boyfriend. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's like you know, it's, it's when you talk about it. There's no you know, this it's not a taboo. It's not something secretive. Yeah. There's when you come there's out no in the light. It. Yeah. When you yeah. are in the light, there's no shame. If you are in the darkness still, then there should be some shame left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Amanda, for you, how how has it been? Because I'm sure probably they had some questions and probably they couldn't ask their father, but they came to you. How how was it for you? Just you know, still playing that supportive role. Yeah. My especially my daughter, she have a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So normally, I, I'm I'm glad that she don't just keep it in her heart, but she will just ask. Mm-hmm. If there is any question concerning the father, yeah. and she will just ask. And uh, by God's grace, I'm still able to answer her, give her that kind of answer that she able to understand mm-hmm. uh, whatever, whatever questions that she has in her heart. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Good. And um, there's something Edmund told me, and and Edmund, you can come in on this also. Feel free to come in on and comment on this. The love. Let's talk about the love. Because what I feel is is not just from you, but even between the, between the two of you, but even to your children, the one thing that has kept you together for the last 25 years has been love. Now for your children, which Edmund lacked when he was growing up, how have you been able to make sure that for these two beautiful children that you have, that they receive this love and they are all they constantly know that their father and their mother loves them. Yeah. I don't know who I don't yeah. know who will go first. <laughs> I think for for me, I think until now we we make sure that they have enough of our attention. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have given them all the attention that because we we really spend a lot of time with them, communicating with them, and uh, make sure that they they perceive they can they know that we love them. Mm-hmm. We do things according to their language of love, mm-hmm. and uh, become yeah. We we really spend a lot of time with them. Really, really mm-hmm. spend a lot of time most mm-hmm. of the time, and we do a lot of things together with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we did we did whatever it takes like, to to for them to know that actually we love them and to just pour that love in their life. Yeah. yeah. And I think we also we do a lot of communicating with our children from very mm-hmm. young. We know mm-hmm. we we don't have baby talks and things like that. We talk like how we're talking to, of course, in simplified manner because they when they were younger. Mm-hmm. But that's like we try to be very open because coming from because not just me, but even Amanda herself has her own past. You know, she was she herself was sexually abused when she was a little girl. Mm-hmm. So that's another in another interview if she's willing. We matured very young, both of us, both mm-hmm. Amanda and I. So we basically uh, do not want our children to go through what we went through. And mm-hmm. not only that, we both have a strong relationship with Christ. And um, more than anything else, we we are raising up our children for Christ, mm. not even for ourselves. We don't yeah. want them to become whom we want them to be. Mm. We want them to end up becoming the person that God wants, God created them to be. Yeah. So they know that, you know. So and we we actions speak louder than words. You can mm. talk, 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 and what they will, you know. There's something. Some things are taught. Some things are caught. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what our children are is because what they taught by looking at the relationship that we share with each other as husband and wife. Mm-hmm. You know, you can talk about love that's deaf and that's no we, we I don't think in our whole life now being married for 25, I don't think we ever fought children. Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit argument, maybe, mm-hmm. but we've never fought. Mm-hmm. You know, but, but technically, but realistic, realistically speaking, we seldom fight. La. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. We don't have a, you know, we have never even mentioned the word divorce ever in these mm-hmm. 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though, by the way, even though we married for 25, we actually known each other for 31, 30 years actually mm-hmm. in total. 
Yeah. yeah so we've been, we've, as I said, we started off as best friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, I felt like we were, even though she was in love with me from the beginning, mm-hmm. I was obviously not in love with her in the beginning. So I felt mm-hmm. like we were two girls, you know, two best friends. You know, we dress alike. We, we, we do all kinds of things, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and I think she did not answer one of the questions you asked earlier. How did she help me in my journey of recovery? primary and biggest way how she helped me mm-hmm. in my journey of recovery is helping me overcome my issues towards women mm-hmm. which I developed through my bad relationship with my mom mm-hmm. you know and it was more of like the barrier issue because my mom abused me mm-hmm. so in my yeah. mind being her no matter how close I get with women I cannot trust them deeply mm-hmm. because you know it you know what a child goes through with their parents will will be stuck with them for the longest time so I couldn't open up to women one of the reasons because I had a, a severe at least a moderate to severe feminine barrier issue I was running away from women mm-hmm. so Amanda was not the first girl who pursued me even though as a as a trans, I was feminine, but I had girls who liked me because, you know, they think I'm cute and things like that. Mm-hmm. But with her, I opened up because of the long journey, you know. I mean, uh, she was in love with me, but it was, that's her problem. She respected me that I did not, I was not interested in her that way. She still stood with me, even though she knew that I had a homosexual orientation. She just was there with me and she loved me for who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't force me to feel this way or feel that way. I told her that I'm your best friend, period. That's it. I love you very much, but no way I'm in love with you. She (laughs) respected that and she Mm -hmm. didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And even on the day in in the 28th December 2000, sorry, 1996, when we got married, Mm -hmm. I made it clear to her. I said, I'm marrying you as a best friend. Mm-hmm. You know, and and and, uh, and we both know what we're getting into. It will. We never even. We only got sexually involved a few years down the road. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that. Even wasn't even that year itself. And we, no one cheated anyone. We both knew what we're doing. It, but sex or not sex, we both recognized that God want us to be together, mm-hmm. and God want us to grow old together. God want us to serve Him together. We both recognized that, but mm-hmm. we both didn't know what the future has you know, in store for us. You got into this marriage just knowing that yes. let let God lead us to where he will yes. lead us because you yes. are still on this journey. Yes, correct. And I would Amanda, recommend... Just sorry to cut you short. Amanda, let me just bring you in for a bit there because he has mentioned something that is really profound. As a woman and as a wife to, to him, how did you take this okay, in, in terms of in terms of yes i don't know if you've gotten my question how did i like because get he wasn't he wasn't yes getting into this marriage and the the challenges that he was going through how were you now that he was not able to relate with you sexually let me just put it straight B- not being able to relate with you sexually is this something that kind of affected you or you knew this is a journey that I have to walk. So I t- I'll have to take time. Yes. I, I already know what I was getting into mm-hmm. because as earlier he shared that I myself was, uh, when I was a child was abused, abused, mm-hmm. sexually abused and all that. So I, I myself had some issues in my life mm-hmm. that come to this area. So when, when I, and en- when we enter into marriage, all mm-hmm. that for me, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. What my main focus was that I'm, I was able to be with this guy that I love so much. Mm-hmm. All the rest, the sexual part and all that is just a secondary. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know what I was getting into and I was prepared for it. And I was, yeah, I was ready. And we agreed. As mm-hmm. he said, we agreed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But the uh, thing is, I think I'm not, uh, Josh, I'm not sure if you know the this terminologies. When we got married, you mm-hmm. know, even uh Amanda had what we call the asexual orientation. Have you heard of that? No. The asexual orientation means she was not really she was not interested in sex. She was just into a romantic relationship, but she, because of her past abuse, mm-hmm. she was not really into sex herself. She looked at sex as dirty. She looked at sex as something not that she's she's not into it. Mm-hmm. So it was that's why I mentioned earlier in our conversation yeah. that we were like a pair, you know, a pair made in heaven. We were mm-hmm. compatible. She was not ready. I was not ready as well. So, you yeah. know, we're both 
so may, probably I was more not ready sexually. I mean, she was less not ready, but she was also not ready. She was not a typical woman who wanted to have sex and all that. She's different because she had her issues as well. Okay. So after we got married, not just I went on my journey, she also went on her journey. Mm -hmm. So in resolving her own issues that she uh, accumulated as a sexually abused person, and not only that, she's also an, uh, she's also an abortion survivor, meaning when she was in the womb, her mother tried to abort her. So she also struggled with some sort of uh, the spirit of rejection and all that. So she had a set of issues, you know. Mm -hmm. but, of course, but our journey became great our journey became amazing after mm. we accepted christ uh, in 1995 you know okay. when i was 25 and she was uh 23 like that 24 it's already mm. 22 okay oh, okay that's cool. like you know uh, yeah okay fine so i want us to land this plant uh plane and reverend let me let me just uh drop you in fast into this conversation before we get into prayers so what what are you doing uh you know to help others this is where i'm leaving you to market yourself together with the mother oh yes yeah. i mentioned earlier we yeah. run two different ministries the mm -hmm. first one is real love ministry yeah and in short yeah. it is known as rlm rlm yeah. is a ministry that journeys with individuals who are serious about walking away from what we call the sexually broken lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we only walk with people who are serious. We are not here to convince people to change. But when someone, you know, come to the place of saying, I need help, please help me. Then mm -hmm. we will lovingly and powerfully journey with them in the name of Jesus Christ and for the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we have another ministry called SIMB. She is my brother. And it's a ministry that trains anyone. And we have students from all over the globe who mm -hmm. is meeting us, you know, virtually and physically to be trained on mm -hmm. how to become what we call befrienders. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones who are doing the work. When I first started my ministry in 1999, I was the only befriender. Mm -hmm. But now we have hundreds of befrienders, if not, I don't know how much, I've lost track. Hundreds and hundreds of befrienders all over the world, you know, that has been, had been educated through SIMB and now being befrienders, mm -hmm. serving, you know, uh, journeying with people, serving their own churches. It's amazing what God is doing and what God has done and he will continue to do. Yeah. Okay. Good. And how can people get in touch with you? Because I am yeah, sure I'm, this... This is going to open up, not just in Malaysia, but now all over the world. Yes, it is. I'm quite active uh, in, on social media. You okay. can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, my handle or username, whichever you like. It's called one word, ex-transgender pastor. Just okay. one word, ex-transgender okay. pastor. And you will find me on social media and i'm quite active so i will respond to you if you leave a comment if you leave a message you will hear from me soon okay good amanda for you i think i would like you to have your last word and even reverend let me start with your reverence just say your last word and then i'll ask um, amanda to say something before she prays for us my last words would be for those of you out there who are struggling and you feel like you are alone in the world People don't understand you. You are struggling with the LGBTQ problem. You're struggling with, you're struggling with the transgender issue or even porn addiction, masturbation. Just know that the Lord loves you and the Lord is the one who has raised up my ministries. And we are God's instrument who wants to just embrace you and love you and journey with you. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to the sound of my voice, wherever you are, come. We will embrace you with open arms and we are not an anti-LGBTQ ministry that, that's going to go against you. We are here to love you and to show you what Jesus wants you to see, which is his agape love. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Good. Amanda? Okay. My word will be, I just would like to encourage those of you who, those of you who have um, loved ones who, who coming out and saying that, oh, I'm struggling with this uh, Transgender, transgenderism of homosexuality. I just would like to encourage you. There is hope. There mm -hmm. is always hope. Mm -hmm. The greatest uh, instruments, that, the greatest um, tool that we have as mm -hmm. their loved ones is prayer. Mm -hmm. I always believe in prayer. Mm -hmm. Just pray. Just cry out to the Lord and, and pray. And just love. Love changes everything. Instead mm -hmm. of just cracking our head, I think we just love and we just pray always hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Please, um, would, could you just pray for us? Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come and take over. Thank you, Lord. We just want to surrender everything into your hand, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to share your love. Your love, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing right now. I just want to especially pray for those who are in that situation, oh Lord, those loved ones, family members, or even a spouse, oh Lord, Jesus, in the situation, oh Lord, that mm. not seeing any hope. Right now, we just want to speak hope. Mm-hmm. Hope in you, oh Lord, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hope in you. There is hope. There is healing. There is restoration. Mm-hmm. There is breakthrough, oh Lord, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You are the answer, oh Lord, for everything that we need in this life. So thank you, Jesus. We speak Jesus. We speak Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much uh, for the two of you for just joining us. And uh, thank you, Reverend Edmund, for sharing your story. And even Amanda for just inspiring us also. We really, really appreciate. I know this is not the first or the last time that we are talking this is a conversation that we are going to have. Remember, if you'd uh, you know like to get in touch with uh, Reverend Edmund, you just need to go on their social medias. That is on Facebook, Instagram. Are you on Twitter? Let me just get it right. Yes, yes Twitter yes. and even and even YouTube. He uploads amazing, amazing uh, conversations there. All you need to just look out for is transgender, ex-transgender pastor. Ex-transgender pastor is what you need to check out for. And uh, he definitely, it is true. He is very fast in getting in touch uh, with you. And uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Edmund and uh, uh, Amanda for just uh, sparing your time and, and, and just speaking to us. I know now you need to go and sleep or rather prepare yourself for dinner. So let me allow you to do that. And uh, I really, really appreciate. It's our joy. Praise okay. the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he hear the cries of your heart. It's been an honor and a blessing to be with you. Bye-bye and God bless you.